Hey guys, Cliff Gray here with Flat House Wilderness Guides and True Hunts. Today we're going to go over sleeping bags, all right? So I'm going to cover backpacking options all the way to uh, wall tent type of horse type of pack-in options, all right, in terms of sleeping bags, all right? So let's start with backpack hunts. My go-to bag here in Colorado is a Kuyu Down bag, okay? This is a negative, uh, or excuse me, this is a 15 degree bag, and that's pretty much what I recommend for your your main backpack bag right for sheep and goats uh, archery elk is a 15 degree bag a 10 degree bag all right and just a quick note on that guys uh, you've probably read this before but take it to heart a uh, sleeping bag rating for the for the most reputable companies you should probably be getting a, a sleeping bag rating that is 20 degrees below the low that you're going to experience during the hunt the nighttime low okay all right so like a you know archery season here in September, you know sheep and goat stuff. You know your nighttime lows maybe right around freezing. So if you're in that 10 to 15 degree range in terms of uh, your rating, and that's with reputable companies, okay. Uh, if you're in that uh, you know 10 to 15 degrees, you're going to be good to go, okay. I like this Kuyu down bag. Of course, you're always going to hear the negative side on the on the down bags, and that's that they're not that you got to be careful about water, okay. If I wasn't always hunting primarily in a dry climate in the fall, i.e. Colorado, uh, for the most part, I probably would get a synthetic, a lightweight synthetic bag and depend on it as my primary uh, backpacking bag. But I find that the down, super compressible uh, for how light it is, for, you know, for the lack of bulk, um, and also for the comfort, for me, down's the best. I just always have it in one of these ultra lightweight uh, dry bags, okay? This is an OR bag. You'll see in my other videos, I use these a lot, but there's other guys that provide these, these ultra light uh, dry bags, okay? So uh, the next option, this is, it's a little bit bulkier item, but if I know that I am gonna be exposed to moisture, I'll bring a Wiggies bag, okay? And these bags, <laughs> I got a funny story to tell you about Wiggies. Early on in my guiding career, it's probably, I don't know, maybe eight, nine years ago, I actually contacted Wiggy, the guy who started uh, this company, because it's just down the road here in Grand Junction, not too far from me, hour and a half away. I contacted him about getting a guide deal. Um, you know, just, just being conservative about cash, I thought I might go try to get a deal. And it was funny, his response said, hey Cliff, you know, I appreciate your interest, but I'm not gonna give you a deal because I make the best product uh, and the most durable product at the best price. So you're just gonna have to pay full price. So. I went and paid full price, and to be honest, the son of a bitch was right. It's a really good product. It's not going to compete with one of these ultra light bags in terms of the utility of, of how light it is and how, um, how compressible it is. This, the, the, uh, the insulation that Wiggies uses is just not as light as down. It's not near as light as down, um, but, and it's not as light as a lot of other uh, synthetic insulations either, but it is synthetic, so moisture is not as big a deal. It's called Lamalite. And I actually find that it's considerably better than other synthetic insulation because it doesn't break down, okay? A lot of the other synthetic insulation, if, and down is the same way, you don't want to keep the bags compressed in storage, all right? And they'll say that on the labels, but the problem, the problem is it's going to be hard for you to comply with that. You, you'll think, oh, I'll just buy one. It's no big deal. I'll always hang it up. You, you won't end up doing that, and at some point, there's going to be some deterioration to that synthetic or down insulation. So try to be as cognizant as, of it as possible, but just realize that it will deteriorate. This Lamalite stuff, it's almost like a sheeting sheet inside uh, the, uh, the outer layer. I find that it doesn't deteriorate. So these Wiggy bags are pretty awesome, and this is their, this is their light version. Um, they, you know, they have different versions of it, you know, backpack versions and stuff like that. A little bit more bulky than my down bag, a little bit heavier for what it is. Same kind of rating. It's in that 10, 10 degree uh, rating, all right? All right, so the next thing I'm going to talk about in terms of backpack options is how do you add a little warmth without having to just go out and buy another $500 bag, okay? You know, at a lower, at a lower temperature rating. So there's two options that I recommend. One, a uh, Wooby item, okay? I would say that this adds... Um, it's a synthetic layer. It's basically a lightweight synthetic sleeping bag, but you can use it to glass or whatever. It's a sheet, so it doesn't. It's there's no zipper on it, so you can wrap it around you when you glass in really cold environments, uh, you know, around the fire at night or just at camp at night. So it's nice for that. There's a lot of utility there. 
But if you want to add it to your sleeping bag, you know, this is the, this is actually the doobie. Okay. So it's like the double wooby. But I'd say that this, this right here probably adds, you know, takes off 15 degrees from the, the temperature rating on your bag if you add it to the bag. And then the, uh, uh, the Wooby, I would say, you know, probably 510 it takes off of there. So, so those are, that's one option. All right, so the other option you have, uh, alternative to the, uh, the Wooby or the Doobie from Kafaro to add uh, some, some temperature rating uh, to your sleeping system, or let's say, to actually take some degrees off of that rating so you can sleep at colder temperatures, is this is an Alps, um, an Alps uh, sleeping bag liner, okay? The advantage for me over the, the Wooby is that it has kind of a felt feel to it. Uh, one thing about these synthetic, uh, this synthetic material that you're gonna find inside all these uh, sleeping bags, particularly mummy bags, whenever you're dirty, uh, and you've been sweating, which is common practice on a, on a backpack hunt, when you jump into these at night, that, that material is going to stick to you. And to me, it kind of feels nasty and it actually affects my sleep. So I actually find that this felt, this kind of felt feeling liner or like a flannel type of liner, it actually helps on that just from a comfort perspective. All right. This liner from Alps, uh, it's much cheaper than the, cheaper than the Wooby but it also doesn't have uh, the uh, utility of the Wooby, right? Like you can't use this, it, like the Wooby has an, a little bit of a wind resistant slash rain resistant outer layer. This doesn't have that. This is strictly a sleeping bag liner, okay? So you lose that utility with it. You're probably um, gonna get about half, uh, half the uh, warmth um, uh, out of this as you are to a Wooby, right? And then maybe a quarter compared to a Doobie. Maybe, maybe a little bit more than that but something along those lines. So you can figure you're gonna add like maybe five, 10 degrees, excuse me, you're gonna take off five, 10 degrees from that sleeping bag uh, temperature rating, okay, by this, this Alps uh, deal. They're lightweight, they're lighter than a, than a Wooby, um, and they can, they can press more, all right? They come in a nice, like this little bag right here, I can easily compress it in there, all right? And then, um, and Alps, Alps makes pretty good products. Uh, I see right here, it does say made in China, as our president would say, but uh, it's, a, it's a decent decent product and it works to, to give you that little extra, those, those few more degrees. And I didn't really go over that, but a lot of times, you know, there's a big difference in a lot of states between September 10th and September 30th, okay? In terms of the temperatures at altitude, all right? It's very common for that nighttime temperature, you know, on September 1st to never go below 35, even at 10, 10, five up to 12,000 feet, even, you know, up in there, you're still going to be like, you know, you might never go below freezing, right? By September 30th, almost guaranteed you're going to drop into that mid twenties range at, at some point. So it's nice to be able to add one of these layers without having to go, like I said, spend another four or 500 bucks on a quality sleeping bag that just happens to be rated five, 10 degrees below that. All right. So that covers my backpack, my backpack options that I use. You'll see a lot of options out there. And what, what you're going to find is you're going to have to go get in those bags and use them and figure out, you know, all those trade-offs, comfort to weight, um, you know, bulk and, uh, you know, all those metrics, they're going to, you're just going to have to figure out what makes sense to you. I'm kind of a finicky sleeper. So I, I tend to give up some of those things like the cost, weight, and even bulk. I'll give up a little bit on those for a comfortable bag that keeps me warm and I can sleep well in at night, all right? People way underestimate the value of being able to sleep well on a, on a hunt, okay? All that plays, it, particularly a backpack hunt, all that plays very deeply in to your, your mental fortitude during the hunt. If you haven't been sleeping, I've seen it with clients a lot of times. If the guy hasn't been sleeping, he's going to be weaker in, term, in terms of his mental toughness, all right? So, so don't, don't puss out on this, this stuff. Spend some money on your sleeping gear and figure it all out so you sleep well up in the mountains and you're gonna do a lot better on your hunts. All right guys, so now we're gonna talk about packing wilderness hunts on horses and mules or even, even a hunt where there's vehicle access to the camp. So what you're gonna see here is comfort's king. Um, you know, there's a lot of budget friendly options. Um, and uh, you, can, you, can you can give up that bulk, you can give up that weight and choose something that you're gonna sleep really well in, okay? <clears throat> and so 
First off, what I'm gonna say, I always like to give you guys some, like some value options when it makes sense, all right? And this is one of those places. You can get a bag like this from Walmart. I think you can get these bags from Walmart for like $35, $40, okay? This is just a Coleman. This happens to be a mummy bag. You can get a rectangular bag for a pack and hunt, no problem. And so get a, get a bag that's rated like negative 20 to negative 15 for your rifle elk hunt, okay? October, November, get one of those bags. This one, this one's rated zero, but really shoot for one that's negative 15, negative 20. This just happened to be one of the loaner bags that I grabbed, but most of, most of what I have and recommend is gonna be negative 20, okay? And then on these, don't, don't worry about, get, I mean, if a rectangular bag, which for me is a lot, is a lot more comfortable, Get a rectangular bag that's got a flannel lining. It's, you know, it's an extra three or four pounds, but who cares on those hunts, okay? So this is one option, just a Coleman cheapo bag. The key thing is don't go into Walmart and cheap out and buy a 20 degree bag instead of a negative 20 degree bag that's $10 more expensive next to it. Get the bags that are, that are rated for much lower than the temperatures you're gonna face, particularly in that, those late October and November hunts up in the mountains in those wall tents. I've never had a guy tell me that, man, I wish I would have brought a cooler bag. I've, I've had in hundreds of hunters packing them in I've, and, and hunting with them. I've never heard that, but I've heard a lot of guys wish that they had an extra layer, okay? So keep, keep that in mind, all right? Okay, so this right here, this is what I call the Mac Daddy of bed rolls for packing hunts, okay? And it's a little bit bulky, but it's not that heavy and it packs really well on a mule, okay? So I'm gonna show you the uh, the setup here. I use I just use you know some short strand or one single short strand of Manila rope, and it's kind of getting worn where it doesn't hurt your fingers anymore over just usage. But um, so I use that around here to keep it nice and snug and compressed because you're gonna see this thing rolls out and has many components and a lot of comfort factor. Okay, so there's one end and here's that. So this right here is just a canvas tarp, okay? You can get these, uh, you can order canvas online, cut your own piece, you can use a, a nice new painter's cloth, something like that, but that protects your gear inside. And then also the canvas in the, you know, real cold conditions, it actually can uh, add you a, a fairly you know, it can add a fair amount to the whole thing in terms of temperature rating, all right? So I have a little pillow in here and I just packed that in here. Now, this is, the, this, if you're willing to spend a little more money and we're not talking about the backpacking sleeping bag type of money, we're talking about 120, 130 bucks. Go with this Teton sport bag, okay? Big rectangular bag, you can get negative 20, you can get negative 40, <clears throat> probably shoot for negative 20 is probably enough. And then it's got this, awesome flannel liner in it, okay? And then the, the, the extra large size of it just makes it a lot more comfortable to sleep in, all right? <clears throat> so the other thing I have in here is I keep a pair of these. These are Boogie, or these are uh, uh, Wiggy, uh, the company I talked about in the backpacking sleeping bag section. These are Wiggy um, uh, camp kind of, uh, uh, what does he call them? Oh, booties. These are, these are Wiggy's uh, camp booties. And what they are, they're that, uh, they're that same uh, material that they, they put in the sleeping bags, that, that uh, synthetic uh, material. Oh, I, I said it earlier, but you can look it up. It's what they're known for, uh, the insulation they put in here. And I just have these in my, in, in my uh, bag here because I set them next to, my, next to my cot at night in the wall tent. And I can put my feet in there and walk out and take a piss at night and not have cold feet. So that's a bonus, okay? So the other thing I always put in here is I just put a wool blanket. If it gets crazy cold at night, like sometimes it can get negative 25 degrees during these hunts or even worse. It's just nice to have an extra layer, okay? And so I can, do, I can use it for that. The other thing about a nice quality, truly wool blanket, don't get a, a knockoff one, it has to be wool, is that if, it, if you get a warm snap, you can actually open up this sleeping bag and still keep yourself covered with the wool blanket, all right? So that's what I call the Mac Daddy sleeping setup for wall tent, pack-in camps, stuff like that. We're weight in bulk, 
are not that big a deal. And honestly, this doesn't weigh that much and it can compress and pack very well as a top pack on a mule, okay? And then obviously a vehicle accessible um, situation, there's, there's no problem with this. So anyways, guys, I hope those options helped you out um, and uh, you find a useful setup for yourself. And shoot me any questions if you have them and I'll talk to you later, thanks.